next subject we're going to talk about is roundness, uh, waviness, lobiness. Uh, and I typically divide roundness into two types. I divide it into flowery round roundness issues. Flowery, stick this on your tallery, tally round, and you'll see something like this. And then I call the next one eggy roundiness. And that one is just sort of shaped like an egg. So let's talk about this one here. There are lots of different causes, but let's talk about one of those causes and see what that is. One cause of flowery roundness is this. Let's say you're doing cylindrical grinding and let's say your wheel is going at 3000 RPM. And let's say your workpiece is going at 300 RPM. Now what's going to happen is this wheel is not perfectly round. No wheel is perfectly round, no wheel is perfectly true, no wheel is perfectly balanced. So you are going to bang on some high points or some heavy points on that. That wheel is going to bang and 3000 divided by 300 is exactly 10.0000000. So what's going to happen is we are going to get 10 waves. Maybe that's 10, maybe it's not, I don't know. But we're going to get 10 lobes uh, on our workpiece. Now, that's not that big of a problem because nothing is perfectly round, nothing is perfectly true. Here's where the problem is. 10.0000 means now we're going to spark out. And when we spark out, that heavy point on the wheel is going to come there and there and there and there and there for our first spark out rev. And then for our second spark out rev, he's going to find the exact same spot. And then we're going to spark out for seven days. And if we spark out for seven days, we end up with a workpiece that looks like that. Now, let's say that we change our wheel speed a tiny bit. Now, let's say instead of running at 3000 RPM, we run at 3091 RPM. 3091 divided by 300 is going to be 10.0397215655321843284 or something like that. Now when we come around, we're going to get some 10 lobes. But now when we come around, there's a little bit of a phase shift and this next guy is going to be shifted a little bit. And he's going to hit a different low spot, and 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 a different low spot. And instead of having to spark out for seven days, we can spark out for two seconds, five seconds, ten seconds, something like that. And I end up with a workpiece that looks like that. And what we want to do is we want to avoid those integer values. Now, things can get more complicated. Let's say you've got an operation and you're running at a constant 4,000 surface feet per minute. Something like that. 8,000 surface feet a minute, whatever it is. Now, as that wheel gets smaller and smaller and smaller, your RPM is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger to run at that constant surface footage. And now all of a sudden, um, your RPMs are going up and up and up. Your workpiece RPM is staying the same. And now you're passing in and out of integer values, in and out, in and out. So I had a customer once who said, hey, we've got this issue. At 8 a.m., our workpiece is all messed up and it has eight lobes on the workpiece. And at 9 a.m., we're doing okay. 
and things are all right. But then at 10 a.m., our workpiece now is messed up, but now it has nine lobes on it. And then at 11 a.m., things are looking good. And then at noon, we've got a flowery workpiece, and it has 10 lobes on it. And we were trying to figure out, well, man, 8 a.m., eight lobes, 9 a.m., nothing, but 10 a.m. had nine lobes. What does it all mean? But 11 a.m., we were okay, but 12, we have 10 lobes. And the reason is because as their constant surface footage was being maintained with faster and faster RPMs, they were traveling in and out of integer values. So the solution, maybe run a constant RPM, but there are good reasons to go at constant surface footage. Or the other thing is just to be aware uh, of this concept and then know if you're getting close to an integer value and how to avoid it.